We just love it when new gear hits our shelves. And today, we're gonna take a quick look at the newly released Panasonic S1 and S1R full frame mirrorless cameras. To begin, let's talk about the S1. It aims to please both photographers and videographers, and looking at only the specs, it might just succeed. It's got a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor, nine FPS continuous shooting, and five axis in-body image stabilization with up to six stops of compensation. For video, it can shoot 4K UHD up to 60p internally to SD or XQD cards, a first for full frame mirrorless cameras. Although to achieve that, it has a 1.5 crop. Now, for those of you who are a little disappointed with the camera's limitations in color sampling and bit depth, fear not. Panasonic is releasing a paid firmware upgrade that unlocks the camera's full potential, allowing you to film 10-bit 422 in 4K, 30p internally and 60p externally with that 1.5 crop. The paid update also enables V-Log on the camera, perfect to match with the EVA1 or Varicam LT. With Panasonic's dual IS technology, the in-body stabilization will work in tandem with optical stabilization on lenses for even better stabilization overall. The S1 also has a high resolution mode allowing for 96 megapixel images. To do this, the camera sensor shifts slightly eight times and stitches the images together for this huge output. Though in this mode, a tripod is certainly recommended. Next up, the more photo focused full frame offering from Panasonic, the S1R. While the S1 offers better video features, the S1R is built to be a photo powerhouse. It's got a 47.3 megapixel full frame sensor, nine FPS continuous shooting, or six FPS using continuous autofocus, and five axis in-body IS, which grants you 5.5 stops of compensation. Despite being a stills focus camera, it still boasts some pretty good video specs. At launch, it has the same 8-bit 420 video in 4K at 60p, though unlike the S1, the R imposes a rather slight 1.09 times crop and uses pixel binning, which is not great. Also, the S1R will not have the option to upgrade its firmware to unlock 422 10-bit shooting or V-Log. Not amazing for video, but the option is still there. Like the S1, the S1R has a high resolution mode that will produce a massive 187 megapixel image. We have a lot of testing to do, but these cameras are promising to say the least. 4K at 60p makes these cameras the first full frame mirrorless options to offer that capability. Both cameras offer SD card and XQD card slots, and the new battery system is good for nearly 400 shots, better than Canon and Nikon's mirrorless offerings, but falling short of the Sony a7 III. I'm very impressed with the build quality and ergonomics of this camera. The button layout and the mini structure are intuitive and I haven't lost any of the dowels and wheels that I'm used to using. I think I can safely say that this layout and size is my favorite out of all full frame mirrorless cameras. While it might not be as small and portable as some other full frame mirrorless bodies, it feels like a pro body. The fact that at launch it can shoot 4K at 60 in full frame is impressive, but we've been spoiled by Panasonic giving us better and better specs in cameras like the GH5 and GH5S. Luckily, with the software key, the S1 will be on par with the GH5's video specs with 10-bit 422 internal, but with a more light sensitive full frame sensor. First impressions have left me really excited to get these cameras out in the field and put them through their paces. We're looking forward to pitting the new cameras against other flagship full frame mirrorless cameras and seeing who comes out on top. Got a question? Leave a comment below and let us know what features you want us to test on these new cameras. If you want to try these out for yourself, you can rent them today at borrowlenses.com. Thanks for watching.